A lot of people don't understand the concept of autoimmunity, or essentially how the body attacks itself in terms of certain diseases. It's a really, really important topic. And I've been focused on it since the beginning of the pandemic because I recognize that autoimmune response was likely to be the cause of severe COVID-19. Because effectively, the spike protein of the virus is like a Velcro brawl. It, it sticks to so many other normal proteins that very easily the body can become trapped into friendly fire. Because that's kind of like what autoimmunity is like. If you imagine a war, it's dark, lots of um, bullets and um, firepower is being used. You're not sure who your enemy is. You see some movement in the distance. You aim your tank and you start firing at it, only to realize in the morning that it was your own troops that you were firing at. And this has happened in real world. That's technically the equivalent in war of autoimmunity where your own troops start attacking each other, thinking that they are the enemy. And this is why, therefore, I have got this presentation put together, Autoimmunity 101, the body's mysterious attack on itself. This is a critical topic because it fits in with the fact that we are likely to have a mysterious epidemic that's ongoing. So please ensure that you click on the link in the description and join us in a few days. Or if you're after that, make sure you take a look at the course. This is pretty serious stuff. And a lot of people still don't get how significant it is. So essentially what I'll do, I'm going to show you a few snippets of some of the slides I'm going to use in the presentation, but I do want you to get a really, really important point. I'm not making up these numbers. Just look at this study here that was done. So this is about incident autoimmune disease in association with SARS-CoV-2 infection, a matched cohort study. This was published in 2023 and the authors were largely based in Germany. And they were looking at whether or not autoimmune disease is increased in patients without prior COVID disease compared to those who had COVID. Now, that's essentially what they were doing. And they did a large cohort study. And they were looking at it between December 30th, 2020 and until June 30th, 2021. And they effectively looked at 641,704 patients. So this was a big study looking at the population level, the impact of autoimmunity from infection. And what they found was truly frightening. And this is why I'm saying this is inevitable that this is going to occur. The question is therefore, when will it hit and how bad will it be and how many people will be affected? And is there anything you can do to mitigate it? That's the question. But here is what they found. When they looked at this big cohort of patients and they matched them, they found a 42.63% higher likelihood of acquiring autoimmunity for patients who had suffered from COVID-19. They didn't say severe COVID-19, this is just infection. And as they said, it was looking at, you're seeing a similar pattern with some of the common autoimmune disorders. And this is suggestive that infection on its own can trigger autoimmune responses. Pretty serious stuff. What I'll be covering as well in the discussion, I'll not talk about it now, but you will see the essence of it here is that a study in Italy, granted a small study published in 2023, looked at what happened with autoantibodies in healthcare workers after they were vaccinated. The numbers here are absolutely stark. But yes, you have to join me in terms of the uh, presentation to see exactly what occurred with that. So when we combine the two things, that's where we get really, really significant issues going forward at a population level. 
And it reminds me of the fact that a lot of people keep on underestimate, underestimating the severity in terms of if COVID is not so severe, it's not too serious. But in effect, when you look at what I call the COVID storm iceberg, we're talking about, you see here, mild initial symptoms at the top sticking up above the water. And then underneath it are this chronic immune activation with lots of symptoms that will come within about 15 months time. That's the problem. And that's where we have to be so very careful with underestimating the fact that virus is still circulating so highly. So part of this is about risk mitigation. You need to understand these risks so that you can try your best to mitigate them. There are things that can be done that reduce that risk. And if you have a family history of autoimmunity, if you even have mild autoimmune disease, that risk is compounded. That's why this is so important. So many people need to hear this, but it is inconvenient information. And as a result, it doesn't seem that it's given as much attention as it should. I'll show you a few slides from the upcoming presentation, uh, just so that you understand. There's one part of this that is really fascinating that I think I'm going to explore more um, in the webinar. And that's here to do with the fact that essentially viral mediated autoimmunity is not new. Okay, you have multiple diseases. I've got them here in a circle, HIV, type one diabetes, encephalitis, rheumatoid arthritis. And in red here are the viruses, Epstein-Barr, CMV. This one is parvovirus. You can see here varicella zoster, West Nile virus. All of these viruses can trigger autoimmune responses. And we'll go through some of the mechanisms when I speak about it, but, the point is, is that when we talk about it in relation to COVID, people don't quite understand that, yes, this disease fits in a similar category. And here is, again, the kind of autoimmune diseases that are triggered by certain viruses, Epstein-Barr being one of them, SLE, multiple sclerosis, Coxsackie virus, type 1 diabetes, it can cause myocarditis. And what we will find in a few years, in almost all of these conditions, you will have SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV-2 as another one of those viruses that can trigger so many of these autoimmune conditions. The point is that this is going to happen at a very significant scale, and we need to find ways to mitigate it. Here is a piece of the puzzle that we really have to try and grasp. And I'm gonna show you another paper here that will show you the importance of this. This is just giving you a little bit of information about the thymus. And the thymus is located inside the chest wall, right at the front of the chest, right behind your sternum. And you can see these are the lungs here, and you can see all of the lymph um, nodes and the lymphatics around it. And this is the cross section of it. It has a capsule on the outside, then it has a cortex, and inside it has a medulla. This is the thymus. Effectively, this is the university training program for the immune system, meaning that if you are going to be a functional immune cell, largely you need to go to thymus university. And they tend to come from all parts, well, from the bone marrow, these lymphatic um, um, immune cells will head off as, as babies. They go and get detailed training in which this process of the thymus gets rid of any immune cells that could trigger what we call self-tolerance or targeting itself. And then if they have passed all the exams, it's a really fascinating process, they can then become mature T cells, which will then go into the periphery. So this thymus is an absolutely critical part of the development and the management of your immune system. It knows very carefully that it needs to control what is going on. Guess what happens after COVID-19? This is what it looks like. And I will show you the, um, the paper suddenly, in, I mean, in a short moment. But this is what happens after COVID. This is pre-COVID. Here we have this person, this is the thymus sitting nicely here in the chest. This is post-COVID. Significant involution of the thymus. 
Now, that has got to have an implication on autoimmunity because you need the thymus to try and get rid of the cells or get rid of the immune cells that are targeting autoimmune responses. So as a final point here, I'm going to be showing you a really, really interesting paper. And this is the one that I think highlights this point about the thymus so critically. Here we have, does the thymus index predict COVID-19 severity? And this was published in about 2023. And they were asking that question about whether or not the thymus was involved in patients who were likely to experience severe illness. And again, I'll go through this paper in a bit more detail in the webinar, and so you'll have to join me for that. But what they did is they took seven different radiographers, I mean, four different radiographers who had at least seven years experience, and they got them to look at scans of the chest for people who had prior scans before COVID-19. And you can see this was done in Turkey. And we're talking about here is that they were looking at, I think, 1,259, oh, of 2,500 patients with confirms um, COVID, of which 1,259 had CTs on presentations. So they then looked at all these uh, patients and they compared the pre and the post, and this is where the thymus is, to look at what happened. This is a good thymus. And then they graded it in terms of severity um, from grade zero being almost complete replacement of the thymus with fat to not much impact in terms of the thymus gland. As I said, the numbers here are absolutely stunning when you look at it. So here is what they found when they actually went back and looked at the patients who had moderate to severe, patients who died and patients who had severe disease. This is the outcome. For the patients who died, they had about 60 patients who died. This was in Turkey. And what they were looking at, the PTL is perithymic lymphadenopathy. For the time being, let's forget about that. But of the 60 patients who died, 48 of them had zero thymic. Um, they couldn't find it. They couldn't see it. Grade 1, again, was 9 of the 60. So you have now 48 plus, I mean, 48 plus nine, uh, that would take you to 56. Over 90% of the patients who had severe COVID-19 had almost complete destruction of their thymus. And when you look at patients with severe disease, similar pattern here out of the 247, you can see that by the time you have grade one, this is the over probably 90% of this number are have had complete replacement destruction of their thymus gland this is incredibly significant because as i said the thymus is your university of training without it you can't then address the issue of self tolerance and this is going to be one of the major factors why my prediction in early 2020 about autoimmunity is so significant. This is probably part of the reason why we had such significant autoimmune responses and in severe disease and why we're seeing this autoimmune pattern going forward. Pretty serious stuff that we have uh, ahead of us. So as I said, autoimmunity is huge. You may not think it's relevant to you until you get sick. I would suggest that you make sure you risk mitigate and at least understand the basics of it, because by the end of that presentation, I will tell you, listen, if you're going to mitigate it, here are some simple things that you ought to do to try and reduce that risk. So remember to join us, Autoimmunity 101, the body's mysterious attack on itself. As I said, I realized that I keep on assuming people understand this and more than ever, people need to grasp how serious this is at a population level. 46% or 42% is a relative risk increase. And here are how the numbers work. If you have a population of 1,000 where 100 people got um, autoimmune diseases, a 42% increase would increase them to about 142. 
is that kind of number. So it's not an absolute risk increase. It's a relative risk increase compared to what the numbers were before. But it is still significant when we look across a population of millions of people without the resources to tackle all of these autoimmune conditions. So yes, join us. Look in the description below. Follow along. Let's help to give you insights as to what will be happening in the future. Have a great evening. Thank you.